Uh, well, now I'm really out of things to talk about, so I'm just going to go through uh, this doohickey I made at the risk of uh, alienating uh, non-programmers. It's just uh, HTML, CSS, and uh, some JavaScript, a couple hundred lines of JavaScript code. Uh, you can see it's um, got this uh, stuff going on here. They're all divs. Um, and then uh, I can do a mouse look on it and uh, do uh, this kind of um, strafing around with WASDA and going up in here. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at the code here really quick. Um, yeah, so the magic trick with the 3D CSS is uh, this preserve 3D thing. It's just got some nested uh, things with it, like the camera goes inside the viewport, uh, and then inside the camera is uh, an assembly, if I remember correctly. The, the, the assembly moves and the camera stays stationary. Um, I think I probably did this for a creative coding event at some point. Um, and uh, yeah, just query selector all and you know the div with the selector and style. Um, and then orient for uh, doing translate 3D. So this actually uh, you know dumps a translate 3D uh, uh, properties into the uh, element style. So that's how the movement is uh, accomplished there in uh, CSS. Um, and then I have like position and rotation, which are just like this. And um, well, maybe I'll go to the oh yeah, the keyboard and the mouse uh, definitions are kind of interesting. Uh, I'll just go down to the mouse. You, you see it has this eventable spread, and then the keyboard has the eventable spread as well, and then also pressable. And so that's just because they both have, um, like, a, a ventilable basically is just a, a thing for binding events. This is just for brevity's sake, I guess, but it, it just goes through all of the events um, and uh, adds a listener to them. And so the mouse has is has pressable, because um, obviously with mouse, it's mouse down, and with the keyboard, it's uh, it's key down. And so when mouse move is activated, it's, um, you know, it'll check to see if uh, there's any, um, anything is pressed, and then it'll uh, orient the camera. So that's this. Um, let's see, and then it does the, uh, yeah, I used to be able to just type this out. It's been a little while. I'd, I'd probably have to sit and think of it if I was trying to live code this. And this is just move forward in the direction of the camera. Um, and uh, let's see, making the faces and doing the random hide. This is the thing that does the random hide. It's uh, definitely, let me see, it, <laughs> it's just a very quickie function there. Um, and then the other thing is just the... Uh, request animation frame here that um, does the random hide on every iteration. That's probably why it's a little bit choppy there. Um, so yeah, I think I just did this for a creative coding event. By the way, if you want to look at that, it's at blorp.surge.sh. Surge is a cool, uh, just like upload anything from a folder uh, thing. You don't even have to push it to a repo. As for what this has to do with Nomad Science as such, I, I think uh, creative coding is an excellent uh, way to start um, interacting with models of the natural world as well as a natural equalizer. I attended a really cool uh, program at a gray area in San Francisco that did art hacking basically. But the thing I really liked about that program is that they uh, they were for kind of people of all skill levels. Uh, it was still interesting because, you know, we, we did like raw CSS, raw HTML, so you get this constraint and you're doing uh, art stuff with it. I did a little uh, uh, like comic uh, with just CSS where like a little Mr. Saturn from Earthbound comes out and blows up. Um, but the reason I really liked it is because, you know, you could get people that, you know, with really, really mixed skill sets kind of like, you know, working on stuff. Um, and it went through very quickly and very tersely. And I was thinking of maybe doing something similar here in Sacramento uh, under the, the name uh, Artifacts Riot. Um, yeah, there's also the School for po po Poetic Computation, and, and Daniel Schiffman has that uh, great book, uh, The Nature of Code. Uh, so things things of this nature. Um, I'd probably sit down and build the projects that we were all like sort of doing, you know. Um, so it'd be uh, it'd be kind of it would still be sort of a peer learning. I just happened to be the facilitator. Um, I think it would be uh, pretty enjoyable to do. So I'm going to stop there. Um, that's it.